inviting the next speaker, Professor Sushanta Benerji. Thank you. So, uh, Professor Benerji is a research director and professor at Department of Pathology and Lab Medicine, University of Kansas Medical Center. He is a skill, he's skilled in uh, mole cell biology, molecular biology, biotechnology, research and cell culture. So today he is going to talk on ERK and CCN2 inhibitions by pH sensitive nanodrugs. It's a novel therapeutic strategy for pancreatic cancer. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, I think you people are sitting over here very tired and everybody knows about, I think better than me, about the pancreatic cancer because before three good speakers gave their talk. Today I will tell the gentleman a few minutes ago, ask the question uh, about uh, why the drug is not working in pancreatic cancer. Everybody tried to talk about resistant, resistant, resistant and you were right that the person who asked the question, fibroblast has any role or not? Yes. Doesn't matter, fibroblastism plays a huge role in pancreatic cancer. This for dysmoplasia, and I will discuss that part. So, my title of the talk is the ARK, or System 5 inhibitor by pH sensitive nanodrugs, is a novel therapeutic strategy for pancreatic cancer. Great. So, there is no shortcut in research, but I have only 15 minutes and a 6 o'clock, so I have to shortcut my talk by five minutes, so you will be happy to go outside. I'm basically, I'll be happy. Okay, no competition, no con with home state, and I don't want to go to this, their contribution in my lab, this work. And the, some of the work is uh, on the cover page of this journal, and also FDA, almost uh, one pat patent is approved for this work. So now, I also, the pancreatic cancer, in, uh, yes, the pancreatic cancer, I will not discuss all these things because time is very short. So, pancreatic cancer, uh, among all these cancers, except GBF, is a very lethal. Most of the time, patients came to our hospital, they are almost advanced stage. I think, in my lifetime, I think I have seen only three to four patients came in my hospital, they have a stage two or six years, five or five years. Most of them, even my, my mother-in-law died after diagnosis, pancreatic cancers, after six months of the, of the diagnosis. So it is a very deadly disease. And, you know, my previous speakers, they talked about the drug, you know, you know it's very poorly, I mean, no drug is work. That's why still, now, gemcetamine is the only medicine, last 50 years. It will work only for 15 days or 20 days. After that, that this, the, this gem set, I mean, whatever they talk, my previous speaker, they're all resistant, including the, uh, what's called, the uh, immunotherapy too. That's why pancreatic cancer is very cold in immunotherapy. Why? That's the biggest question. I mean, if you ask any speakers, they cannot answer this question. But the truth is that I believe my, 30 years experience of the this patient, this dysmoplasia is the biggest challenge and the pH that uh, Pankaj discussed about the low pH of the uh, environment, that's called hy hypoxia or low pH environment. So let's go, I don't want to waste time. Okay, you know the pancreatic cancer is pancreas, if you look at the pancreas it's called, I mean I consider it a two-storied building. In the one store, in the middle store, they secretes growth hormones, insulin, and the second row they use some secretory protein, that's the exocrine cells, uh, secreted the pancreatic enzymes, and the digestive things. And most of the cancer happen in the duct of the pancreas. So, if you look at the pancreas, pancreas is three parts, tail, body, and head, you know that. And cancer can happen in everywhere, and most dangerous, and it doesn't matter the tail or body or head, it is deadly disease. But most of the time, pancreatic cancer happens in the head. That's why most of the patients, when, when you see the patient at the age of 45, that's why it is very careful about the everybody. If you have a jaundice at the age of 50, 
the doctor will tell you, can you check your pancreas? Chance is pancreatic cancer. Because it's just block the bile duct. So you have a jaundice. In addition, if you have the other part of the body, maybe some other factors, like even very quick body weight loss. So why? Because of this. So what here you, I will discuss, I will not discuss all the details about the pathology. I will discuss about this. Here has mutations. In pancreatic cancer, every speaker will come and say, the driver of the pancreatic cancer of the kid has mutations. That's not true. In normal cell, if you introduce a mutant pancreas, mutant keras, the cell will stop growing. In norm, normal pancreas, if you introduce a keras mutation, no, the cell will stop growing. So you need another heat, another heat that is P53 mutations or other mutation, then it will become a oncogene. So here you can see this all is straight. I am not, I'm not going to deal with more than that because so now is a is a pancreatic cancer. The two things is a dysmoplasia and poor angiogenesis. In pancreas, most of the cancer you can see the huge angiogenesis. That's why treatment is very physical. You can give the drug, the drug will go because they have a lot of blood vessels. Although the leaky blood vessels, but you can treat them. But in pancreatic cancer, very few blood vessels are there in a tumor. They're, that's why they're very hypoxic. Very hypoxic low pH. And there is a cage. Every cancer, there is a cage. That's called, you know, that's called dysmoplasia of fibroblastic cage. That's covered the whole cancer. That's why drugs cannot enter into the cancer cells. But if you destroy the dysmoplasia and if you do not deliver any cancer killing drugs, then the tumor will grow. Big cancer. That's why in MD Anderson, one paper published by Raghu Kalluri, they said, oh no, if you destroy the dysoplasia, you get more cancer. That's not true. True is that you are killing the fibroblasts, cancer cells are getting more sprays, they are growing, they are making more fibroblasts. If you keep the patient, if you see the patient, you can realize that. Forget that. So, basic thing is, extracellular, and this is the fibroblast that particularly creates the dysmoplasia sound tumor. Next, the KRAS mutation is responsible for dysmoplasia and the activate the PSA of the pancreatic stellate cells, the fibroblast cells, to make the dysmoplasia. So, the main culprit is KRAS mutation along with the other mutations. Now, so it is called tumor microenvironment. So that's why I discuss about this, all these things. You can see under the tumor microenvironment, or you can see the dysmoplasia. Next, so you can tell this tumor ecosystem. So what we did, this tumor ecosystem means, let's go further, and as controlled by the KRAS, as I mentioned, okay. So tumor, if you look at the KNS mutations, how many mutations do we have? There are 13 amino acid substitution mutations of KNS you can see in the pancreatic cancer, but the major is this three, G12R, G12V, G12V, and G12C is only, only in 0.4% pancreatic cancer. The drug, we are now yelling, oh my God, we make a, a KNS inhibitor. That is only for the 0.4% pancreatic cancer patient. It is a good for lung cancer because lung cancer, 78% lung cancer has a G12C. Most of the biggest G12D is pancreatic cancer. There is no heat for the G12D mutations. So basically, if you, if when we get the G12D drugs, then we can oh we can enjoy. Okay. Now, and let's go to the other part. And you know, G12D mutation is a 90, almost all pancreatic cancer, G12D mutation you can see, and that is a reduce the survivability. So now, if you look at the things, why drug doesn't work? Several years ago, so they developed the KRAS mutation, KRAS dependent drug. They tried to kill the MAP kinase, block the MAP kinase. Interestingly, when they block the MAP kinase, ERK goes up. So, MAP kinase inhibitor did not work. They try to RAF. When they turn off the RAF, ERK goes up, didn't work. 
So that's why people are talking KRAS is non druggable non drug So there are several ARC inhibitors developed by FDA approved. They tried, very toxic. So they stop the give the ARC inhibitor. So what we did, we said the ARC inhibitor is a really, really, really good for pancreatic cancer if we can reduce the toxicity and if you can deliver properly in the pancreatic cancer. So what we did, we make a nanoparticles. It is a polymer nanoparticles, not the carbon nanoparticle or not the silver or gold. It's a polymer that is biodegradable. And we put two notch, two particles. One is called IRGD that is specific for tumor cells. And we put a pH responsive nanoparticle that's a sensor. When they enter into the cells, they will look for the low pH environment and look for the hypoxic conditions. And once they will get the hypoxic condition or low pH condition, they will release the drug. So these nanoparticles we, uh, we apply for patent and it's approved. The patent. Now what we did, we put the, it's a like a, we, we did it twice, but I have to I have no time, but I will discuss. It is a like a like a nice rose row flower. In one we put the ERK inhibitor. And another one, we put the gemside cytokine. And we gave this one in vivo, in, in vitro and in vivo. It enters into the cells. IRGD first bind with the NRP1, the, the receptor, because IRGD is the peptide that binds with the neurophilin. And neurophilin is only expressed in cancer cells, pancreatic cancer cells, huge. Other bodies also, in, but it is expressed in huge, I will show you the picture. And then it bind with the bind with the, the each bind with the, the NRP1 and enters into the cells. And they go moving around the whole tumor, they're looking for the low pH. And you know, middle of the pancreatic cancer that is most vulnerable is low pH and hypoxic. And then release the both drugs. And we find it kills the whole pancreatic cancers and the distal plastic areas in a, within 15 days. I'll show the data. This is the, our model, and I will give you some brief explanation of that. This is the nanoparticle on the top, the box polymer. It is the ERK SCH77298, the ERK inhibitor, the FDF group. It is enters into the blood vessels, go to the hypoxic zones. It is a whole idea of, this is just, just published this paper, and you can go enter and release the drugs in the no, no, in the hypoxic areas, not the non normoxic areas, no other part of the body, because all our part of the body is the very normoxic, pH 7, 6.9. Here, our pancreatic cancer, either hypoxic or pH is 6.2 or 6.3. So, and mechanistically, you can see the ER ERK is basically with the C June, C force, and AP, turn on the CTGF and CCN2. And that EMT in this the cancer stem cells and the forming dysmoplasia, hemorrhage, I am not going to detail things, and then destroy the whole cancer cells. That's the whole principle of that, the, our nanoparticles. Here's the nanoparticle we prepared. I mean, time is very short, otherwise, I could get this dynamic light scattering. You can see the nanoparticles. It is the atomic force microscopic image and the size. And here is the P 7.5 and 7.5, 7.5, two different yeah, PG, DB, NP that release the drug, but PG, XD that does not release the drug. So this is the whole thing. And we got this, this is the size is 100 to 150 nanometer size of the whole nanoparticles. And in uh, normoxic, hypoxic condition, you can see the data that's showing that drug is released only in the hypoxic condition, not in the normoxic condition. And as I mentioned earlier, that the NRP1, you can see the PANC1 cells. Why we consider PANC1 cells? Because PANC1 cells are the G12 mutations. And KPC, you can see the huge NRP1 expansion. KPC, which we generated from the mice. And here you can see the, all the human PDX, PDX, uh, PDX, KPC, PDX. You can see NRP1 expansion in the tumor, not only the outside of the tumor. 
let's go. Here is the other part of the scene. You can see the intercellular distribution of the NP. I am not going to details here. And the data is showing that Mia Pakaya and Pank 1, the IC50 is significantly low in when it put the nanoparticles. So toxicity just only is very specific, not the outside of the tumor. And I did the Mia Pakaya, all the other chloric forming, formation ability forming, tested the nanoparticles. And also the phospho RK inhibitor goes down. Regulation of arc signaling by ERKI. You can see all the signaling patches is going down. I'm not going to details about that. If you have any question, I can answer. And that is the, you can see the ERKI promotes the activation of the inactivation states of the pretaxial here. You can see the alpha smooth muscle is a very um, positive marker. And you, know, and you can see this one is being done now. So here is the KPC mice we generated. How you can generate this KPC mice? We, we cross between the KP and KC, and you can see the tumor here. Okay, and in vivo experiment with nanoparticles, you can see all this. We did the untreated free combo, NP combo, free gem set avenue, free gem, free art, NP, NP, and you can see the when you give the nanoparticle, the protein, the tumor growth is significantly low, significantly low as compared to the control or free gem or free nanoparticle. And here is the Ki67 expression in the different tumors after treatment. You can see the free and combo phospho ERK conditions here. That indicates that completely suppress the phospho ERK expression. And here is the, you can see the nanoparticles, IRGD minus, as I say the IRGD. Without IRGD, no nanoparticles inside the tumor. But once we put the IRGD, you can see the nanoparticles with the drugs here. And all the details about the tumor growth, here is the, the KPC mice. So you measure the tumor growth at the end. And see ARKI, in embryo and gem set, the red color is going down significantly. Okay, so next is, sorry. Here is a different marker we measure. And we found that all the arc downstream, downstream signaling molecules are decreased, including the CTG or you can say CCM2. And the take-home message is the pre-sensitive nanodrug carrier for record delivery ERK inhibitor and gem set have enhanced the inhibition of tumor growth in pancreatic cancer. Our funding thus develop a simple yet efficient drug delivery approach to overcome the limitation of ERKI for clinical application and present a new model for sensitization of the gem by ERKI with no or minimal toxicity. And then I just acknowledge everybody who will go help in this work and the Thank you.